So we're on world history and on um, chapter 10 on Rome. And we got down to the second triumvirate. And I kind of went over that already. And the first one, remember, it um, was with Julius Caesar and Crassus and Pompey. Now we have another, and each one is in the midst of civil war because they end up warring against each other, as it happens. But in the second triumvirate, um, we've, uh, we had um, Anthony, Octavian, and Lepidus. And remember, um, these, are, these are the heirs, actually, followers from uh, Julius Caesar. So, and so um, basically, Anthony, Mark Anthony, was one of um, Caesar's generals. And Octavian was his adopted son. He was 18 years old when he, when he took over this position. And Lepidus, that too, that he, um, he was of the Senate, also involved in the military there too. So I, as for Senate, um, not just under Julius Caesar, Caesar as, um, as a, a, a follower of Julius Caesar, okay? So, and then we talked about the Civil War that began there. Between, the, between them and caused a big civil war. So we have Lepidus withdrawing, and then we have, um, you know, the, the um, in five years, that first five years, um, they're going out and they're finding the assassins of Julius Caesar and killing them and um, bringing Rome, trying to bring Rome together, although they ended up dividing. Here is um, a picture of Augustus Caesar, who is Octavian. So later on, he becomes Augustus Caesar, let's just say that. So then we have um, Mark Anthony, Cleopatra, and Octavian. And um, as they were joined, joining together, now, um, now they're going to be fighting against each other. So Anthony joins Cleopatra in Egypt. Um, he secretly marries her. He, they have five children, and he starts giving away some of the Roman territory um, to Egypt for her. And so Octavian took advantage of this to arouse the public because Octavian wanted full on control and to get rid of Mark Anthony. And so he wages war with Mark Anthony. And the Battle of Actium. This is very important that you remember this battle because this is the last battle before Octavius Caesar takes over. In 31 BC, Octavian came and Actium was a um, um, naval type battle. It was, uh, it was on the on the naval area, not just on the coast, but um, so Rome brought in its navy or its ships. And so it's one of the most decisive battles. Octavian's armies um, conquered the east and he claimed the land of the Nile for Rome. So as the battle Octavian was going, Anthony was not there. Uh, in fact, um, he retreated from there and ended up um, com committing suicide. Well. We, we know that they, if he would, was caught by Octavian, Octavian threatened, he wanted him taken alive so that he could bring him to Rome and put him in prison and shackles and make fun of him, so of course. But anyway, so Anthony did. Later on, um, Cleopatra um, committed suicide because she was threatened too. And um, her, Anthony's son and Julius Caesar's son um, both ended up um, you know, being in the war and dying in the war of Octavian. I think they were both captured and then killed. But Cleopatra had four other children. One set of twins ended up Octavius's um, uh, sister um, that that had married was married. Um, I I think to Mark Anthony, but um, Mark Anthony left and married um, Cleopatra instead. So um, she ended up taking those children and raising them as her own, the four younger children. So just to let you know some little details about that. And so now Octavian was the master of the whole empire now. So that is, that's the end of that part. And let's go on. I'm going to go ahead and um, go on to the next here. And we're going to start a slideshow on the next, for the next chapter. So here's 8.3, or the next section, I should say. Here's 8.3, the Roman Empire. And so we're going to be talking about uh, Augustus and Pax Romana. And we're going to talk also about the Claudian emperors, uh, Flavian emperors, the five good emperors, 
uh, the century of crisis and the age of grace. And we'll divide this up into two videos. The early empire, Augustus and Pax Romana. And so what's Pax Romana? It's a new word for you. It means peace. It means Roman, see the word Roman here? Roman Pax means Roman peace. So it was a time of peace. It actually lasted 200 years. So it lasted um, through Octavius's lifetime and on, on to into the next um, 200 years. But really it was a false peace because there was, there was a lot of turmoil going on during that time, especially in the persecution of Christians. But anyway, Octavian returned in triumph to Rome in 30 BC, and he had a hero's welcome as the savior and the restorer of peace. Now, um, as for the death of Mark Anthony and Cleopatra, um, basically the people of Rome, they did not want to see um, an Egyptian, um, you know, ruling Rome. They, that made that, that sick in their hearts. And so they, uh, most of Rome was behind um, August, uh, Augustus or Octavian. He changed his name to Augustus, and we'll see that. So when you see the name Augustus Caesar, it is Octavian, who was um, Julius Caesar's adopted son. Julius Caesar had a son with Cleopatra that could have taken over too, so they had to kill him. Um, so he did not want Julius Caesar's son with Cleopatra taking over because he did not have the rightful, he was not the rightful heir as not being a biological son of um, Julius Caesar. So anyway, um, however, Octavian merely retained the outward forms of the Republic while increasing his own desires. The Republic was, or, was um, ruled by an absolute ruler, one man. So even though he had a Senate there, he actually ruled. And so he was more of a, a dictator or emperor than um, ruled by a Senate. Octavian's titles. He took the title Princep. What's a Princep? Is a first citizen. So he said, I'm, I'm the Princep. He said, took the name Caesar. We know Caesar because that was the heir of distinguished Roman family of Julius Caesar. So he kept his name Caesar's and that went on through history. They would say Caesar, Caesar. And it all came from Julius Caesar and being Roman. And then um, imperator or emperor. So we'd say em emperor, but then it's imperator or commander in chief. So he would be the commander in chief. Pontifex Maximus meant supreme pontiff, which he would be the chief of the priests and sacred. That's why a lot of Caesars took um, on saying, telling everybody that they were gods because they were the supreme pontiff. Um, and so they, at any, any religious ceremony, they could go and be worshiped. So Augustus mean, meant reverend uh, or God and the highest deity. So Augustus was basically saying that he was a God. So Octavius took the name Augustus. Um, he would not, he didn't, he gave away his Octavian name. No one would call him Octavian again. And he now would be Augustus Caesar the god Caesar, right? Caesar Augustus is the name that he goes by and they go by in the New Testament in the Bible. It, calls, it says, in the time of Augustus Caesar, that was Octavian. Here's some pictures. He was so young, 18 years old, when he, when he took the throne. When I say throne, took the emperor position. Under Pax Romana, which Pax Romana is uh, what? Roman peace. Pax Romana. So um, Jesus was born in 4 BC in Bethlehem of Judea um, under the time of Augustus Caesar. He was born during that time. So here we have in the midst of all these things going on, we have the true savior being born. Although Augustus Caesar called himself the savior of Rome. And now we have in the midst God, God's son incarnate, God incarnate, God being born in Bethlehem as the true savior. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? Pax Romana or Roman peace lasted for that 200 years. And from so 30 BC to um, AD 180, there was peace and prosperity for Rome. Now I said, not necessarily for Christianity though. And so to me, it was kind of like a false peace. Commerce and law um, prevailed during this time. So uh, they did prosper. 
and it, order generally prevailed. There was some kind of order. During a lot of time of Rome, there was, it was chaotic. You know, so here's a picture of peace, kind of that peace room. I know. Let's see, make sure you can see all that. There you go, okay. So let's go on. Augustus Caesar, um, he extended the empire to the Danube River in Europe. He organized the professional army to guard the frontiers. So he organized um, and sent out the army to guard his, his land. He established the official bureaucracy to manage the affairs of empire, which means he brought in those hirelings so that they would run his government for him so he wouldn't have to do that. Um, that's bureaucracy. And so, and then he extended citizenship to people, certain peoples, and he administered laws of the court, and he recruited Roman soldiers of every section. Here's a picture, kind of a picture of Augustus Caesar handling it all. <laughs> anyway, building program. He had a massive building program. Um, he built Roman stadiums, walls, baths, temples, roads, aqueducts, and many of these things still stand today. Over 2,000 years, they were really built well. Let's just say that. Now on to the Claudian. Let's see if I can, can see this whole thing. Kind of important. Back it up. There we go. The Claudian emperors, AD 14 to 68. So after Augustus dies in 14, AD 14, the year 14, um, Claudian emperors, because he was a Claudian, his last name, his name would have been um, Octavius Claudian, you know, or that name. So he was a Claudian. The Claudian emperors succeeded him. Augustus had a stepson. Now, Augustus didn't have any uh, physical children, so he had a stepson named Tiberius. And so Tiberius was an able leader in the foreign affairs, but he was pretty unpopular. So here's a picture, here's Augustus when he wrote, well, now we have Tiberius. So he wasn't, he was not that popular in Rome, Rome. let's just say that, Tiberius. Probably because he wanted to curtail the circuses. So he said, we don't want to put he didn't want to keep going with the circuses at full um, in the gladiators as, as full full and spend the money there so which would be a good thing really but tiberius um he ruled during the time of jesus earthly ministry and death and resurrection and ascension so basically the whole time of jesus tiberius was um the one in charge and so you find him written in the bible in the time of emperor tiberius so and then we have, let me show these pictures and we're going, we'll have Caligula right here. He was absolutely crazy. We have Claudius, a weak leader. He too, um, he was going to end up poisoned to death. He too is uh, a bit crazy. And then we have Nero, the craziest of them all. And we'll find out why, you know, he fi actually fiddled while Rome burned. So um, we have a whole one, two, three, four descendants of Augustus all on all told this one this um not so much tiberius but um, caligula was totally insane and nero was totally insane and evil and immoral the claudian emperors first caligula he was the surviving son of tiberius's um, nephew he was insane and he appointed his in fact he appointed his favorite horse to be part of the senate <laughs> Can you imagine that? What the people would think, he's, he's, he's making his horse the senator? That's what he thought of the Senate. And he was murdered by his own bodyguards. It says Caligula was attacked by a group of guardsmen and stabbed 30 times and killed. They wanted to really get rid of Caligula because he was so crazy. At the age of 28, he was killed. Claudius. Claudius was the uncle of Caligula. He was well-meaning, but a very weak uh, ruler. Um, he made Britain into a province during that time, so that that was a big deal back then, 43 A.D. So he did he did send his um, his army and soldiers into Britain and guarded Britain, and he but he was poisoned by his niece and fourth wife. They decided to poison him to get rid of him, so that her son, his, her her son, not by him, but her son Nero would then be able to reign. She wanted her son Nero to reign. We find that Nero was the craziest of them all. Nero, 
He proved to be mentally deranged and morally depraved. It's a picture of him. Um, he put his uh, he put his half brother and then he and, and mother and his wife to death. He decided he got very paranoid and decided to have most of his family killed. Let's just say that. Caesar and Nero also put in the Bible Peter and Paul. When you talk about um, the disciple Peter and Apostle Paul, he, um, they were put to death during the times of Nero. He um, he was persecuting Christians at the height. I mean. Hundreds of believers were martyred during the time of Nero. So in AD 64, there was a disastrous fire that swept Rome and burnt most of Rome down. And many feel he was responsible. In fact, it says the story that history goes that he was fiddling, playing his fiddle or his harp while Rome burned and laughing. That's how crazy he was. He shifted, but then he shifted the blame not to himself, which he actually, they think, was responsible for starting the fire. He was very much an arsonist, let's just say that. And he shifted the blame to Christians. And so that's what began the first great outbreak of persecution of the Christians. And like I said, hundreds of believers were martyred. And Nero's own Praetorian Guard, Praetorian Guard um, revolted and they forced him to commit suicide. They wanted to get rid of him because he was so crazy. So he ended up being forced, to, well, I would say if you're forced to commit suicide, it's kind of like being murdered, but anyway. So, and here's a picture, Nero fiddled as Rome burned. See, it's more like a little harp, you know? The Flavian emperors. Um, so then when, after Nero was gone, they wanted to, different, um, a, different emperors came in and they took them not from the Senate or not from um, the inherited right of Nero, of course, um, and we call these the Flavian emperors. The Flavian emperors were three and three of a three family and they were, they, um, were um, basically uh, more, more military, let's just say that. So right after there were four rival gener generals um, that ruled only in one year, I think I said four before, but it was four of them that ruled in one year. And then um, Vespasian um, emerged victorious among those four rulers, and he became the dominant ruler, Vespasian. And then he had two sons, Titus and Domitian. Titus and Domitian too. I know we think at this time it was, it was less chaotic, but the persecution of Christians was um, going rampant still. So Titus and Domitian and his two sons ruled during this time. Titus ruled in AD 79, and that, that year was the year that Mount Vesuvius erupted and buried the cities of Herculeum and Pompeii and Stabiae. So our, um, yeah, Stabiae. So we have these being, anyway, we know about Pompeii. The city of Pompeii is, was an excavate, excavated, and we know um, now about how that Vesuvius erupted and what, what um, people just died in their beds, you know. It was such a dramatic um, volcano. Well, Jesus pro gave a prophecy in the Bible, and he said that not one stone would re remain um, and that the whole temple would be destroyed. And you can read that prophecy in the Bible. In uh, 66 um, six to 73, the Jewish people were revolting and there was a Jewish Roman war that went on. And so Rome was at the door um, trying to actually destroy this Jewish revolt. And it was under the rule of Vespasian, but Titus was his son and he was the general. So Titus came into Jerusalem in AD, AD 70, year 70 AD, and he, uh, Titus captured Jerusalem, which fulfilled the prophecy that Jesus had prophesied 40 years earlier and uh, that the temple would be destroyed. And Titus did uh, destroy the temple. He destroyed any um, Jer Jerusalem. He salted the area and um, he wouldn't even let, two, two Jewish people couldn't even be talking to each other. And he sent them away, he killed many of them, took um, captive the others. He sent away and the Jews were dispersed at that time, not to come back until 1948. So here we have 
the um, Jews being dispersed, which was prophecy when it's under Titus. Just remember it was under Titus, the Roman um, ruling. Actually, it was, he was the general, and Vespasian, his dad, was ruling, and Titus was the general that um, was in charge, his son. Domitian's persecution. Um, Vespasian um, was his dad, you know, Domitian. In AD 81, when Domitian took over, he demanded to be worshiped as God. Uh, he said, everybody need to worship him. And this renewed the persecution of Christian be believers and not renewed it. It actually continued the persecution of, of uh, believers in, to a greater extent. And then he died in 96, the year 96. And, but the second great persecution came to the end for a while until when he died. And here's a picture. You can see all these Christians here, and they're sending in the, t the lions and the animals and to um, the gladiators or for the um, Colosseum there. That's the Colosseum was where they had all those gladiator fights. And then there were five good um, emperors, and I would say really um, not so good because persecution still continued in their time. And the, the this was the highest prosperity of Rome. Nerva was the last rival of the Senate's power. So he was against the senator and said there would be no more Senates, you know, um, that would rule and his army supreme in politics. Trajan, Trajan extended the borders to Dacia and Mesopotamia. Hadrian, Hadrian's one of, uh, Hadrian is not my favorite at all. He was a crazy one. And, but he built this huge wall that's in Britain to protect the empire against the Picts and Scots. Antonius Pius, um, he did a lot of building too. Both of these during this time, Hadrian, there's a lot of Christians killed under Hadrian. He hated Christians. Then Marcus Aurelius, and Marcus Aurelius um, was a Stoic. Remember Stoic philosopher um, that goes very legalistic and he wrote a book on meditations that a lot of people, even today, read this book for the Stoic meditations. But here we have Nerva, Trajan, Hadrian, Antonius Pius, and Marcus Aurelius. So, uh, let's see. Persecution of Christians, I said, continued. Um, all of these so-called good emperors, I hate the word to call them good emperors because they were not good, good in a lot of sense, especially morally, they were not good. But, um, but they, at least at that time, the, the Rome thought that they were better than the ones they had. Huh? So all of them, except for Nerva, savagely persecuted Christians because they denied the divinity of the emperor and state. Because the Christians would not say, um, would not worship Caesar. So if they wouldn't worship Caesar, they would put to death. And so here we have um, between 109 and um, 111 AD, Pliny was the governor sent by the emperor Trajan, for I held no question that whatever it was they admitted, in any case, obstinacy and unbending perversity deserved to be punished. That's what he said about the Christians. So, quite a deal. So let's stop right there and we'll go on in the next video.